Shredder is an independent film made in 2011 by Cody Clark. He's made several movies in the last 10 years, and Shredder is his first feature film. He's part of this movement that goes by a few different names, such as Truly Independent and Folk Filmmaking, which is essentially a group of filmmakers who create low-budget and open-source films for viewers. Told in black and white, likely for budget reasons, not artistic purposes, Shredder is about a young guitarist named Travis who is trying to balance his love life while he pursues his passion for music. Travis navigates through multiple relationships. There's a woman named Sarah who has a brother expelled from school for being a pedophile. He has a platonic relationship with Amy, his ex-girlfriend. And then there's Kate, she's a virgin and a Christian. And what I like about it is Cody never judges these characters. He treats them with compassion and empathy. He's not bitter about these women who reject him. His sensibility makes the film endearing. When a relationship doesn't pan out for Travis, he simply adjusts and tries to move on. It's never their fault or his fault. Cody Clark's careful attempt to examine and understand these characters works better than the mean-spirited film by Noah Baumbach called Marriage Story. That film with its phony seriousness was swallowed up by the Hollywood elite who don't understand relationships. And Cody also addresses a topic many people have had about separating the art from the artist which is something I didn't see coming watching this movie. But instead of picking one side, his empathy allows him to explain to the viewers why there is no right and wrong answer to this subject. Cody does condemn the pedophile who inspires and teaches Travis to play the guitar, and rightfully so, but he doesn't judge how the characters respond to the pedophile. Travis and the pedophile's sister, Sarah, have completely different reactions. You can understand why Travis can look past it, but you can also see why Kate feels differently. So Cody Clark does have a moral code, he doesn't subscribe to moral relativism, and he acknowledges pedophilia is an evil act, but he understands people will react in various ways about it. Also, it's interesting because it never dawned on me that if someone close to you was that evil, you would have a difficult time enjoying things that that person enjoyed. In this case, metal music. And it could apply to anything else too. So it's an interesting observation. The quality of the performances are mostly pretty good. They're authentic and naturalistic, but never become dull and uninteresting. There are some issues with the film. The dialogue is long-winded at times. There aren't that many interesting shots, and a few parts of the film drag, especially the talent show sequence. That was really the only moment where I wanted it to just end. But aside from that part, I thought it was well-paced. It's not as powerful as something you'll get from Woody Allen or Todd Salans, but it's a good film. And someone in the comment section in my last video asked me what I wanted to see in film. I can do a whole video about it, but I'll quickly say this. When I do reviews, I'm looking for humanistic films or moralistic films. So I don't care how flashy or twisted or deep or dark a movie is. And if it says nothing about the human condition, then I'm not going to like it. I spoke to Dan Lotz about this, and I told him a quote by Aristotle that said, If you listen to the wrong kind of music, you'll turn into the wrong kind of person. And I think that applies to all art. That's how I view movies. So that's why in this review and most of my other reviews, I'm not too concerned if a movie is 15 minutes too long, or the aspect ratio, or anything like that. I'm mostly concerned about the message and the human experience. And reviewers don't generally talk about that stuff. There are a few online, but none of them are on this platform. But I am looking forward to a sequel called Strummer. It just came out. It's going to be the third film I've watched from him since I also watched his other movie called Mute Date recently. Now, I wasn't a fan of Mute Date at all. I didn't like that film. Felt like Shredder is a lot more nuanced and interesting. Also, I'll be doing a video on this folk filmmaking movement and I'll give my final thoughts about it before I move on. But it could be the future and nobody ever reviewed these type of movies on YouTube before. So I'm going to talk about the good and the bad stuff I've noticed from the community. I expect the video to come out in a few days or a week from now. Anyway, Shredder is a sincere, humanistic film and it does a good job tackling a tough subject. While his other feature, Mute Date, misses the mark, this film explores the complex ways characters face up to their identities and confront and examine themselves.